We've got studies showing really positive impacts on depression and anxiety and potentially reducing cancer risk. I mean, holy sh**. Holy shit, indeed. What's up, friends? Today, we're talking all about Ozempic, or semaglutide, or Wigovi, or the miracle new fat loss drugs. Well, they're not that new. They've actually been around for about a decade. They mostly were targeted for diabetics type two. Uh, they've been rebranded recently as miracle fat loss drugs. They're pretty much in every celebrity's back pocket and they're probably coming to a clinic or suggestion near you soon. But is it really that simple? that this class of new drugs is going to be the solution to all your weight woes? Are they gonna save us from the obesity epidemic? Are they going to simultaneously shrink our waistlines and expand our health span? Who knows? And that's what we're gonna do today is consult the internet to find out what's really going on and is this craze, this trend, and this feather really worth the hype? Before I play you some clips that I found on the internet that I'd like to react to today, I just wanna bring you up to speed on what these drugs are and what they actually do. They do a few things. They have side effects, but the method of primary action with these is they are known as GLP-1 receptor agonist. It's a fancy way of saying they work on the GLP-1 receptor, which is a receptor that helps you to feel full or less hungry. Now, in the clinical sense, when these drugs are used, you are looking at an effect of about 165 hours after an exposure to something like Ozempic semaglutide. This is essentially an effect of about a week, whereas natural native GLP-1 elevation in the body is minutes. So we're talking days versus minutes, which obviously shows you the profound impact that they can have on satiety and hunger. And they act also on glucose metabolism, glucose sensitivity, insulin sensitivity, they have effects of slowing digestion and motility, and these compound into this overwhelming desire to eat less food. And in a world where we hear the advice all the time, eat less, move more, and fix your eating habits, and just don't eat as much, it seems, at least on the surface, that this is a wonderful solution. But in complex situations of certainly which humans are, there are usually trade-offs, and I think that's what we're going to look at today. So let's find us some videos, let's react to those videos, and let's see what the internet churns up. All right, first up, we've got Dr. Mike Isratel. Very well respected in this space. Let's see what he's got to say in this clip. Is Ozempic the solution to obesity? Yeah, okay, that's, that makes sense. I think some people have an issue with the fact that they feel like it's kind of cheating. You know, I had to get there. The f I'd love to tackle that one. Okay. Yeah. Your ability to lose weight can be a test of your willpower, or you can take the... F pill and with no added willpower lose all the weight you want and then you can test your willpower on tending to your family better being a kinder person to others coaching little league football and being on time for the kids instead of standing a hardy's line getting your third cheeseburger for that day wow strong take i can see where he's coming from that this ability to buy back your willpower essentially by using something like Ozempic is then gonna allow you that mental energy and cognitive horsepower that you otherwise spend thinking all the time about food into things that are more important in your life, like being present with your family, channeling that back into work. But even the conversation around willpower can be a little bit funny because it inherently assumes that anybody that is going to be successful without the drugs is going to need to white knuckle it like that the basically your success is determined on your ability to either have willpower or not it's a little bit putting the blame back on somebody and saying like hey the reason you failed is you weren't strong enough you didn't have enough willpower i can see the case where some people have had extremely long battles with weight the scale food their environments where something that could come in and help them in that arena would be a massive aid to the mindset, to the journey, and to the health. So you have to weigh some risks when we talk about something like semaglutide. The risk of being obese or the risk of a drug. Let's listen to Peter Atia about some of those risks. I'll tell you what's wrong with it. Almost without exception, every patient we've put on this drug has lost muscle mass, and they have lost it at a rate that alarms me. So it's not uncommon if you weigh 200 pounds and you go down 180 pounds that you're gonna lose some muscle, some fat. But let's be clear, if you lost 10 pounds of muscle and 10 pounds of fat to go from 180 to 200, would that be good? Well, only if you were more than 50% body fat at the outset. Otherwise, 
you've disproportionately lost muscle to fat. In fact, you've gotten fatter as you've lost weight. We uh, work closely with patients to make sure that if they're on these drugs, that they understand that their protein requirements do not change. So if you're at 200 pounds and your target weight is you know, 180 pounds, you're still gonna be consuming 200 grams per day of protein and you're going to be working out just as heavily as before. And if you do that, yeah, you can actually disproportionately lose fat mass. It's really big statements there. Before we hit play on that clip, he was saying just how effective it is. I mean, the problem with things like Ozempic is that they work. They work really, really good, which is creating this excitement around them and this kind of grabby, I, I wanna get my hands on this, especially for people that have had these struggles for a long, long time. So much, in fact, that it's becoming hard for people to get them. They're, they're getting priced out because it's becoming like a designer medication. So, Peter's not denying that they work. He's almost saying they work really good at losing weight. But there's a big distinction here. We don't necessarily just want to lose weight. We want to lose fat. Because if we b bucket all of the weight and half of it lost is muscle, we've caused ourselves some very severe problems, especially down the line. If you choose to go down this route, you absolutely have to maintain a resistance training program and you have to be on a high protein diet. Otherwise, yes, you might succeed in your primary goal of losing weight, but the consequences of that could be dire if half of the weight that you are losing is lean tissue. This might also go to explain what's happening with what is being termed ozempic face. This might explain what is happening with this phenomenon. The headline here, Hollywood's ozempic face crisis. Plastic surgeons reveal the celeb suffering from gauntness because of a weight loss drug. And if you scroll down, it kind of shows you some pretty harrowing pictures here of celebrities that have gone from maybe being a, a little plump in some cases to kind of drawn out and skeletal looking and even healthily looking people that seem to be going down the realm of turning themselves into a human skeleton. And there's a lot of reasons why people think this happened. Primarily, it's defended because it's a rapid weight loss and some of that is gonna come off the face. What I very rarely hear talked about with Ozempic face is it's, it's this problem of loss of protein again, loss of structure, loss of skeletal muscle mass, and particularly in the face, a loss of collagen. So there's definitely something going on here and I would think that it's a loss of collagen with a loss of all of the lean mass that is commonly found on these Ozempic drugs. All right, next up, let's see what Dr. Tina has to say about Ozempic. Not what they're telling us. We can start to heal some of these chronic lifestyle conditions that are so rampant with tiny doses of this. Dr. Tina Moore is a distinguished naturopathic physician whose groundbreaking work is leading the way in combating some of the biggest diseases and medical conditions that our modern world currently faces. Everyone's saying that Ozempic is evil, this is the worst thing ever, but a lot of people are being overdosed for weight loss, and this leads to a very high risk for side effects. But Ozempic, done correctly, has all these other benefits that have nothing to do with weight loss, and they are just mind-blowing. Healing and reversing type 1 diabetes, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's. We've got studies showing really positive impacts on depression and anxiety and potentially reducing cancer risk. And then my daughter's PCOS symptoms reverse, which is probably one of the number one drivers of infertility in young women. I mean, holy shit. Holy shit, indeed. This is about as good of as an advertisement for Ozempic that you could possibly get, right? She she made an interesting point that people that are pushing back against this drug and saying, what about the side effects? Is maybe because people are being overdosed and given inappropriate amounts of Ozempic or semaglutide, insert brand name, which is an interesting point. And she's saying at lower appropriate doses, it can have many effects that she said aren't tied to weight loss. And I'd be very interested to dig into that claim because there is pretty much no ailment that that won't be improved or even potentially reversed by losing enough weight to get to a healthy body weight. Now, there are ways you get there. There are healthier ways to get there because again, all weight loss is not created equal. But to say that the drug itself is potentially causing these effects aside from its weight loss aspects might be stretching a little bit, I think. Let's see what Noah Davis is saying about Ozempic. Oh, 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 we know you didn't do that alone. Oh, Zambic, it shows you were fat not that long ago. Oh, we know what you did. Oh, <laughs> well, I've 
first thing I'm going to say is Noah's got a set of pipes on him. He can hit those high notes. That's pretty funny. That is pretty funny. We know you didn't do that alone. Sometimes that's okay. You know, I think this is the problem on both sides. People are too like, hey, this is a moral failing. You didn't have enough willpower. You should have just trained harder versus, you know, the people that are completely going to take this drug and not change anything. And that is one of my big worries. It's just like, oh, give me the Ozempic. Let me take the easy way out. I'm not hungry anymore. I'm still going to consume crap. I'm just going to consume less of it because you're kind of creating this learned helplessness. You think that you can only get to this healthy way with this drug and otherwise you are powerless because you either don't care or you have been failed by the system so much that you now have handed over your sovereignty and power to this injection. So I think, again, the truth is often with these things somewhere in the middle. And in a crazy world, if you can't have a laugh at something, then something's wrong. You gotta just laugh sometimes. Thank you for the giggles, Noah. Let's hear what one of our favorites, Lane Norton, has to say on this. Give me your opinion on these new GLP-1 agonists like Ozempic. If you look at the research data, I mean, they work. They work. They're very powerful appetite suppressants, and people, on average, lose about 15 to 20% of their body weight. Um, people have concerns about thyroid cancer. Um, those studies are in rodents. We know that less than 50% of those studies can translate to humans. There, So there's that, and then there's the, well, people lose more lean mass. We have to worry about that. If you look at the amount of lean mass that people lose while on Ozempic or GLP-1 mimetics, it's very similar to the amount of lean mass that people lose when they just do diet with no resistance training or exercise. This is an interesting point because it runs contrary to what Peter Atia said in the previous video that this up to, and what is borrowed in the literature, up to 40% of the weight loss could be lean tissue. Now that he does have a point and I'd be interested to see where he goes with this. When anybody loses a significant amount of weight, there's usually some muscle loss that occurs. We want to minimize that. Dr. Atia, who was using this with patients in his clinic for a couple of years, started to see such a discrepancy between total weight loss and the fat and muscle percentages of that, that he instituted some rules in order to move people through this safely. So let's see where Lane is going with this, where he thinks it's just a normal consequence of losing weight. And so these studies so far really haven't combined those and looked at body- Zempic plus resistance training. Correct. That's what Peter Atia was alluding to. That's what he gets his clients to do. High protein diet plus resistance training plus the GLP ones. We don't know what that looks like. I, I more worry on an individual level that if we are not instituting good eating behaviors and lifestyle change facilitated along with this, that people will go from eating a lot of crappy food to eating a little crappy food. Yeah. And still not getting enough dietary fiber, uh, still not getting enough protein. Lane does have a pretty nuanced take there. I push back on him. I know Lane loves his fiber. Um, I don't think it's the be all and end all and panacea of health that it's often propped up to be, but he's nail on the head with this one. If people don't also do this in conjunction with lifestyle reformation and habit change and guidance and a whole, whole overhaul of their identity, then they're just going to become the person that eats a little less crap and probably continues to live an unhealthy lifestyle despite losing the weight, which will improve some markers, maybe even tremendously, depending on the level of obesity for the individual, but is not going to fix the root cause. You have taken the band-aid, you've put it over the bullet wound, it's helping stem the bleeding a little bit, but wouldn't you rather fix that up properly and heal? Health is an inside out game and we must fix what's going on in here, in here and what we do every day with our habits. So we'll see you next time. Thank you for following along. Stay radical. Peace.